on behalf of our visionary pastors, Pastor Ab, Pastor Rachel Bosov, what a great privilege it is to welcome you into the house, myself, Pastor Andres, and my wife, Rita. I mean, Friday, it was such an honor to, uh, there was over 200 people here in the house, but Friday, I had the privilege to present the stage for Pastor Ab, for my pastor up in Pretoria, over 16,000 people in attendance uh, Friday in Pretoria. It was something to experience, and all glory to God. No one came to seek the face of a man, but to seek the face of their Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Hundreds came into salvation, and uh, it was a glorious thing to, to, to see. And it's what it's all about. He became sin. He, so that you will, b- will bear no sin. He bore all the sin. Jy is gezond as gevolg van die bloed van Jesus. You are where you are because of the blood of Christ. You are no longer condemned. You are no longer a slave to this world. You are a child of God, of the most high king. Daar is nie een beter positie as a kind om te wees as dit nie. The son and the daughter of the most high king. You are royalty. Tap yourself on the shoulder and say, Hey, you are royalty. Come on. Amen. Not even the queen's mother had the position you have, man. So lift your shoulders, lift your chin, and give the Lord your God a joyful praise. There's no better seat than the seat that you have and the seat that Jesus gave you. Amen. Amen. Let's take our seats this morning as we receive a a word this morning for the Sunday. Great to see so many people in attendance. Many people obviously on holidays, many here. And great, great to see the church uh, still alive and active and revival in the city and in the cities of the Val Triangle. Amen. 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 We had the privilege to take four days of family vacation. Your pastor came back two kilograms on the other side of the scale. Dry Romeis and super chup loop saam, papa. Ek kan nie gaan super chup rai en nie dry Romeis eet nie. And I was stout for a dry room, I said. So uh, it was, uh, it was a, 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 a glorious challenge to get into this paki for Ochant, you know. But I'm, um, yeah. So on our way, on our way from, uh, from holiday uh, up to Pretoria Friday morning, we were, uh, there's music playing here, DJ, thank you. Uh, <laughs> there, there was a, a traffic officer that pulled us over there on the other side of Rustenburg. And... Uh, Walked around the car, took my license, checked out all the things and said, listen, your left uh, uh, front uh, main light is out. Your, one of your back lights are out and your right indicator isn't working. That will be 500 rand. I said, well, the quotation isn't too bad. I just need the vehicle back before five tonight, please. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, I'm a little bit of a The title of my message this morning, Plain and Simple. A new story. A brand new story. Turn to your neighbor and say, your life is a new story. You have a new story because of Jesus Christ. Say amen. Let's turn to our Bibles in Scripture, Luke, Matthew 23. You can look there. Ek was op vakantie, ek voel baie beter. Luke 23 verse 27, As the soldiers led him, Jesus, away to be crucified, a large number of people followed him, including women who mourned and wailed for him. Two other men, both criminals, two other men, both criminals, were also led out with him to be executed. When they came to the place called the skull, they crucified him there along with the criminals, one on his right and the other on his left. He was crucified, the Lamb of God, with criminals. Jesus said, Father, forgive them for they do not know what they are doing. And they divided up his clothes by casting lots. The People stood watching, and the rulers even sneered at him. They said, he saved others. Let him save himself, 
if he is God's Messiah, the chosen one, let him show himself. The soldiers also came up and mocked him. They offered him wine vinegar, sir vein, and said, if you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was a written notice above him which read, this is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who hang there hurled insults at Jesus. Aren't you the Messiah? Save yourself and us if you are the Messiah then. But the other criminal rebuked that criminal. Don't you fear God? He said, Since you are under the same sentence, you're going to die, my brother, and you still have it in you to speak to the Messiah like this. He said, don't you fear God, since you are under the same sentence. We are punished justly. We are supposed to die upon this cross. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Remember me, Father, when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus answered that thief. Truly I tell you, truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. Today you will be with me in paradise. Upon the cross, Jesus rewrote the story of that man's future. Hello? Upon the cross, in a moment, Jesus rewrote the story of that man's future. In a moment, the thief's eternal home changed from death to life. In a moment, It changed from eternal condemnation and darkness in hell to receiving a glorious seat in paradise with Jesus for eternity. In a moment, his life changed. Yes, he was going to die moments after that. But the rest changed forever. He wasn't going to hell. He wasn't being delivered to darkness. In a moment, that thief received a seat, a glorious seat in the paradise as Jesus rewrote his story upon the cross. My brother, my sister, if you want the outcome of your life story to change for eternity, if you want the outcome of your life's story to change for eternity, You have to recognize Jesus as the Son of God. You have to turn to Him for your salvation. Just as the thief on the cross next to Jesus did. The thief on the cross recognized, number one, he recognized Jesus as the Son of God. And he turned upon the cross. He turned to his Messiah, to his Savior. You have to recognize him as your Savior and turn to him as your Lord and as your personal Savior. Not only did this man recognize Jesus as the Son of God, but he also believed in Jesus and proclaimed Jesus by faith as his eternal Savior. He said, Lord, when you come into your kingdom, he professed, he said, you have a kingdom. You have the only kingdom. And you are Lord. He proclaimed, he professed Jesus as Lord and Savior. This man's entire life story changed because of who he believed Jesus were and because he turned to Jesus. His path was laid out before him by the law of this world. That sinner's path was laid out before him by the law of the world. You will die. You will be condemned. You will go to hell. He was surely ending up in hell through condemnation for how he lived his life as a thief. But Jesus rewrote his story upon the cross. Say amen. 
Jesus rewrote your story and my story upon the cross. Say amen. And I don't know how your story looks on paper. I don't know what your story looks like when you are going to pin it down. But when you sit at the foot of the cross, there's a what it was and what it is. There's always a before the cross and an after the cross. Amen. Before the cross, I was nothing. I was no one. I was hurt. I was broken. I had no future. I was condemned. Before the cross, I was going to hell. But because of the cross, say it this morning, because of the cross, I have eternal life. Amen. Give God praise. Come on. There's a before and there's an after. And I don't know what your story will look like upon paper. But I can promise you this. When you sit at the foot of the cross, focusing on the cross, my story changes when I look at the cross. Once I was an orphan. Now I'm a son of the Most High God. Once I was lost and Jesus rewrote my story. Now I'm no longer lost. I am found. I am saved by the grace of God through the blood of the Lamb upon the cross. Amen. Your sickness was once your identity. But now, because of the cross, there's a different story. He was a thief, but because of the cross, he changed from being a thief to a son of the Most High in a moment because he recognized who Jesus was. The evangelist Alistair Begg tells this gripping and life-changing story. I've watched it over and over in the past few weeks about how this thief on the cross next to Jesus entered into heaven. It must have buggled the minds of the angels at the pearly gates. Because no thief is supposed to enter through the pearly gates. No murderer is supposed to go through the, uh, the, the pearly gates. No person of this world is supposed to enter through the pearly gates. How did the thief enter? Who did you pay? What did you do? How did you get into the pearly gates? The man enters into paradise and the angel asks him, what are you doing here? Because the angel recognized this man as a thief. He said, what? what are you doing here? He said, I don't know. I'm here. He said, what do, you, what do you mean you don't know? How did you get here? He says, I don't know. But I'm here. He says, whoa, Bajo, what's going on? Number one, how did you get here? Number two, what are you doing here? He says, I told you. I don't know. She says, okay, hold on. Let me just call my manager. Let me just get a, let me just get a, a senior angel yeah. Let me just, just get the guy that knows who's supposed to be in here and not, who's not supposed to be in here. And this angel comes in, this manager angel comes to the thief. He says, how did you get here? He says, I told that, bro, I don't know. But I'm here. He says, so what you doing here? He says, I don't know. He says, okay, okay. Well, then you lost. So let me, let me ask you this. Do you know the doctrine of justification by faith? And the thief goes, never heard of it. He says, okay, let, let's go straight to the doctrine of Scripture. He says, what's that? He says, if you don't know the doctrine of justification by faith, and you don't know the doctrine of Scripture, how did you get here? And the thief says, the man on the middle cross said, I may come. The man on the middle cross said, I may come. He said, I'm allowed. He has forgiven me. The man on the middle cross said, I can come. John 14 verse 6, Jesus said to him, I am the way. I am the truth, and I am the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Not through an answer.
ancestor, not through a religion, not through a world order. Nie dier jou Afrikanerskap aardig en kafee kaart nie. En nou mag ek sikker weer nooit aardig en kafee toe gaan nie. Baie dankie, is fijn. Nou is andere plekke ook. Jy gaan nie dier jou opa groeikie wat oor die berge getrek het, jimmel toe gaan nie. Jy gaan nie. You're not gonna get into heaven through a sagoma. And crucify me for that. That's the word of God. That's not me speaking. There's one way. Jesus Christ. Through the cross. By the blood of the lamb. There's only one way. Your life will not change. Your position shall not change. Your future shall not change. Your dream shall not change. Your heart shall not change. As you Jesus Christ is not seen as the Son of God and as your Redder and Salig Maker. Punt. That's the Bible. Through nothing else but through Him. There is no other way to eternal life but through Jesus Christ. And that way was laid out by Jesus through giving His life. Upon the cross. He gave, he sanctified us, he glorified us by his blood. This world cannot sanctify you. Nothing in this world can glorify you, but Jesus Christ sanctifies you and glorifies you as a holy offer unto God. If you believe in the finished work and power of the cross, then the cross changes the outcome of your story for eternity. I believe, therefore I speak. Hoe kom praat jy so baie? Want ek gloe in alles wat Jesus is. Ek gloe in alles wat Jesus gesê het. Ek is en wie ek is. I believe in the power of the blood of Christ. That blood heals. That blood restores. That blood unites. That blood loves. That blood sanctifies. I no longer have the dirt of this world in, my, in me because the blood of the Lamb sanctified this person. Amen. For His glory, not for my boasting. So I humble myself before the cross. As I stand here before you, I can sense, I can feel, I experience standing here, what, not even three meters from the cross. I can feel the power of that cross because it symbolizes who Jesus is, who God is above all. I mean, God made his love known to me and to you because of the cross and upon the cross. Because I believe in what Jesus has done for me upon the cross. Every aspect of my life has changed. Ek is nie meer die ou 1986 Andries Vermeelen nie. Ek is nie eers meer die Andries Vermeelen wat ek in 20 jaar was nie. Dankie Heere, ek onthou nie eers meer die ou nie. Because that boy was in ruin. That man was lost. Then I went back to the foot of the cross. But I had to go back. Me. I had to go back to the foot of the cross. And again, 2,000 plus years later, God again revealed himself to me upon the cross through his love for me. And that changed my total eternity. I might not know where you find yourself today. I might not know what sickness or disease you are fighting. I mean, there's many members sitting in this family here today that's been with this church from day one. And I won't point them out. There's members physically facing death through sickness and disease. There's a member sitting here who faced cancer. There's one sitting here facing it. But she's not facing it with her back to the cross. She's facing the future by holding on to the cross. That takes away all darkness. And their testimony is powerful and active because they are not sitting in ashes. They are in the house worshiping God. Their body is aching with pain, but their hands are lifted and they're worshiping and they're praising. There's a brother sitting here who had a kidney removed the other day. 
He's not sitting in a jail. He's not sitting in his house mourning the loss of a kidney. He's back at the foot of the cross. That gives our testimony power. When we come back, we show the world that sickness and disease will not stop us from worshiping the one true God. Amen. Amen. 1 Corinthians 1, 18, verse 31. To preach the message of the cross seems like sheer nonsense to those who are on their way to destruction. They don't believe the message of the cross. But to us who are on our way to salvation, it is the mighty power of God released within us. There's a power living in you and in me because of the cross. The same spirit that rose Jesus from the grave is the same spirit that lives in you. Jy het nie armsalig en geduldige geest nie. You don't have a poverty spirit. You have the spirit of God living with inside of you. You have to tap into that spirit. Because when I am weak, I tap into the cross and the cross makes me strong. What are you tapping in when you're weak? What are you tapping in when you're hungry? What are you tapping into when you, when you are lost? What are you tapping into? You have to start tapping into the cross, my brother. Where's your marriage? Tap into the cross. Oh, but you don't know what he did. Tap into the cross. Stop moaning, stop rehearsing, stop cursing. St- get up and tap into the cross. Where's your business at? Where's the cross in your business? You have to tap into the cross to get your story changed. Because I haven't known this woman for more than a year, but I can tell you this. She has shared her personal testimony with me and my wife. My net gelijk is <laughs> uitstap in die parkie toe sy klaar gepraat het, man. But because of the cross, there's a different story on this paper. Because Jesus rewrote her story. It's the power of God released within us. Verse 19. For it is written, I will dismantle the wisdom of the wise and I will invalidate the intelligence of the scholars. Because wisdom will not get you, worldly wisdom and scholarship will not get you into the kingdom of God. But by Jesus Christ, a living relationship with him the key to eternity verse 20 so where is the wise philosopher who understands where is the expert scholars who comprehends and where is the skilled debater of our time who could win a debate with God hasn't God demonstrated that the wisdom of this world system is utter foolishness For in his wisdom, God designed that all the world's wisdom would be insufficient to lead people to the discovery of himself. Who are you following in this world, leader? A government? A government that's not following God? A system in your business? That demoralizes the word of God? Who are you following? Verse 22. Let me go back to verse 21. For in his wisdom, God designed that all the world's wisdom would be insufficient to lead people to the discovery of himself. He took great delight in baffling the wisdom of the world by using the simplicity of preaching the story of the cross in order to save those who believe it. The simplicity. There's nothing complex about following Jesus. For the Jews constantly demanded to see miraculous signs. While those who are not Jews constantly cling to the world's wisdom. But we preach the crucified Messiah. Not a law, but the Messiah. Resurrection. Love and not condemnation. The Jews stumble over him and the rest of the world sees him as foolishness. 
But for those who have been chosen to follow him, both Jews and Greeks, he is God's mighty power, God's true wisdom, and our Messiah. Say amen. For the foolish things of God have proven to be wiser than human wisdom. And the feeble things of God have proven to be far more powerful than any human ability. Brothers and sisters, consider who you were when God called you to salvation. Moe forget waarvan God jou gered het nie. Never forget what God has saved you from. Never. Considered who you were when God called you. That's why I'm so thankful. I cannot stop speaking about what God has done. Because I can remember who I was. And who I'm not. Not many of you were wise scholars by human standards. Listen up. Not many of you were wise scholars by human standards. Nor were many of you in positions of power. Not many of you were considered the elite when you answered God's call. But God's call was and is for everyone. As jy dink, het gaan een klomp reik lani gatte in die jimmel wees, maak jy een fout. Ja? Ja, ja. As jy dink, jy gaan net saam met die mense in die jimmel sit, wat by jou in die stuit bly, maak jy een foutie. Because the call of God is for everyone who believes. Not your doctorate. Not your title. But God's call. 27. But God chose those whom the world considered foolish to shame those who think they are wise. And God chose the punny and powerless to shame the high and mighty. He chose the lowly, the laughable in the world's eyes, nobodies, so that he would shame the somebodies. For he chose what is regarded as insignificant in order to supersede what is regarded as prominent, so that there would be no place for prideful boasting in God's presence. When you stand before God, my brother and my sister, you stand naked. Your grand baggy, your car, your house, your beleggings, it makes no sense for God. I say, you don't have any. But it's not good what God makes no To God, it's about your soul. To God, it's all about do you love Him? To God, it's about do you recognize His Son Jesus as your Lord and Savior? I mean, if you do not think that this Jesus, who rewrote everyone's story, this Jesus, if you think he's not powerful enough to heal you and to save you and to restore your life, it will not happen. It will not happen if you don't believe it. Verse 30 says, for it is... Not from man that we draw our life, but from God as we are being joined to Jesus, the anointed one. And now he is our God-given wisdom, our virtue, our holiness. He is our God-given wisdom, our virtue, our holiness, and our redemption. Say amen. And this fulfills what is written. If anyone boasts, let him only boast in all that the Lord has done. Andries van Meelen het niks sonder die kruis recht gekry nie. Niks nie. I boast in what the Lord my God has done for me. And in nothing else. May it be to glorify you, Father. Let's get back to that thief upon the cross. Jesus did not first ask what that man's past was like. Hello? Jesus didn't Say, okay, okay, hold on, what, what did you steal? What did you smoke? What did you snort? Waar had jy ingebreek? Come on, quickly. Was die tyd oor nie? Ga nou donker raak hier so. Quickly tell me, what did you do? 
Jesus never asked him. Did he? Jesus never asked him. He never asked this man, what was your, what was your IQ? He never asked him. He never asked him what, what was his role and position in life. He never asked him. Jesus confirmed that man's future the moment the man turned to Jesus. The moment that man recognized Jesus as Lord and Savior, Jesus changed that man's story. While the Lord was experiencing the physical, emotional, and perhaps even spiritual agony. This wasn't a joy ride. He begged God that the cup will pass him by. He sweated blood. It was full of agony, full of pain upon the cross. He felt every nail. He felt every thorn enter into his skull. He tasted the sour wine. He was see for a lekker opzini, but he knew he had to do it. Why? For you and for me. And while he was going through this pain, through the spiritual agony, through this emotions, he still expressed the divine nature of his love for man. Above his pain, above his agony, he still showed that sinner the nature of his love. He had the compassion to listen to the pleas of the one who had great need. And Jesus acted on the response of that sinner because of who this man said Jesus was to him. Jesus acted on that. Who is he to you? He will act on that. Who is he to you? Who is he Jesus for you? What does this cross mean to you? Do you ever think about this? Or do you just go on with your life? Just go on trying to hit the budget. Young person, in whatever grade you are in high school, student, what does this cross mean to you? Because if this cross doesn't mean anything to you, the end will not be a great story. Who is this Jesus to you? The price has been paid. Say it, the price has been paid. You don't owe Satan anything. He saw. It has to get into ya. Where it he? Get it ya and take it ya. Ye skilled Satan nux. So stop paying him back. You owe him nothing. He doesn't own you. It wasn't Satan on the cross. It was Jesus. You owe him your entire life. You don't owe Satan nothing. It was Jesus that paid the price. He paid the price and it wasn't a cheap one. I mean, all the money I have accumulated in 20 years in business could not pay my sin. Everything I have inherited in this world couldn't pay the price. You can be 300 million strong. You can have billions. It cannot pay the price. Because the money of this world will never be able to pay for your sin. It was the blood of the Lamb. More valuable than silver and gold that paid the price for you. Give God glory for that. Come on. Lord, may we not forget. May we not forget. I read the story in the week about a judge that had to sentence his own son with a drunk driving charge. A judge. And before him stood his own flesh and blood, his son, his only. And that father sat in 
the seat of the judge. He was a judge in the law of this world. And he had to sentence his own son with a drunk driving charge. Because he was sworn to uphold justice, the judge charged his son to the fullest extent of the law. He didn't sit there as a father, he sat there as a judge. And he had to charge his own son to the fullest extent of the law. But moments after his son was released out of the court, the judge stood up out of the seat of judgment and he walked into the court, into the, in, 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 into the offices and that father took out his wallet and he paid for his son. That's exactly what God did. It's exactly how God treated us. But we were not the ones judged. He judged his own son, Jesus Christ, to the full extent of the law. And then he paid the price himself. Romans 5 verse 8 says, But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were sinners, Christ died for us. While we were sinners, Christ died for us. Because of his death, we are no longer sinners. Stop living with a sinful mind, sin conscious life. You are redeemed. It's been paid. You are no longer bound to the sin of this world because of Christ Jesus. God paid the full price for our sins through the blood of Jesus Christ. John MacArthur said God treated Jesus on the cross as if Jesus lived your life. And he treated you as if you lived Jesus' life. Do you get that? He treated Jesus as if Jesus lived your and my life. That's the price that was paid. John 3, 16, for God, for God so love the world that whosoever, is there any whosoever's here? Well, this, this boy was once a whosoever. I'm not a whosoever anymore. I was a whosoever, and I called out, and I received, and I professed, and I changed from whosoever to a son of the Most High King. I'm no longer whosoever. But it's not for the literate. It's not for the, for the rich. Whosoever. Because the cross comes and it truly makes us even from left to right. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. Jesus confesses this love. In John 15, as I close, as the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Now remain in my love. If you keep my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commands and remain in His love. Verse 13, 13 says, greater love has no one than this. There is no greater love. This is the greatest love story ever. There is no greater love. To lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. No longer, I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends for everything that I have learned from my father I have made known to you. You know me. You are not slaves. You are my friends. Verse 16 says, you did not choose me, but I chose you and I have appointed you. You are chosen. You have been anointed. You've been saved. You've been washed by the blood of the Lamb. You've been redeemed for eternity. You have been chosen. You are a royal priesthood. You are victorious. 
You are not dead. Come on. Amen. If you want to see this change in your life, if you want to see the old change to the new, if you want to see the before change to the after, you have to change your talk. Hello? You have to change your talk. Until the word divorce is not off of the table and out of your heart and mouth, your marriage is under stress. Uh, uh, listen, I'm not even for my soul. Oh, no, I'll lay on eight knee. I never expose anyone in this church because you come to me and my wife in unity and you come seeking wisdom and spiritual leadership. I will never disclaim and show what you have unless it's your testimony which I can share, a glorious testimony. Because God didn't, oh man, that was in your right on my testimony when the people did it. Hey, shush man. God gave you a testimony so that someone else can hear who he is. Hoe kom bly jy stil oor jou testimony? Maak op jou mond te begin praat, asjeblief. Want jy bly stil en iemand anders gaan dood, want hulle het nooit gehoor wat God vir jou gedoen het nie. As God jou gered het van een siekte af, sê jy dit vir die wereld, so dat hulle kan geloon, hy sê hulle God wat jou gered het. Opstel bly oor wat God vir jou gedoen het, man. I'm not ashamed of what God has done for me. You have to share it. But listen up. There's many of you. And I pray for your marriage every day. I do. Ach, jy het sêke nie so baie tyd hier. Well, ek staan vier uur op. Ek moet vier uur op staan om vir jou te bid. Anders het geslaap tot sês hier toe. You have to change your talk. Your finances, change your talk. If your current situation isn't wonderful, change your talk. I've known this man and no point that you ideal. I've known this man for a few months, not even six months. His talk is not one of being bound to a wheelchair. I mean, on a Friday morning, Lord help me. Daar is gezonde mense in die kerk wat nie eerst na die grond toe kan kom om te bid saam met ons hier. This man gets out of his bed gets into a wheelchair, gets out of his car in a wheelchair, and he comes and prays on the land. He is not bound to that thing. He has changed his talk. And when I sat with him the other day, he said, the Lord my God will lift me out of this wheelchair, and I will have that testimony. He has changed his talk. Change your talk, man. Change your talk. I can share with you all of these befores. All of it. The cross changes your talk. And my talk cannot change if I'm not looking at the cross. When I'm taking a seat at the foot of the cross, my talk changes. Oh, Father, how wonderful, how merciful, how great are you. The one who was, is, and is to come. The land that was slain. Father, you know my past, but you have also spoken into my future. And I proclaim your word and I proclaim your will over my future, Father. And your love and your mercy. It changes your talk. That's what the cross means to me. You have to change your talk if you want to see your story change. Because of what Jesus has done for you and for me. We no longer talk about our chaos. Say amen. Get the chaos out of your mouth. Wow, what an inspirational message from Pastor Andres this morning. There's just nothing like keeping the Lord's day holy. The good news is the day is not over yet. Join us tonight as we gather together right here at CRC Ball for our six o'clock service. Can't wait to see you there.